Hello friends, myself Dr. Vishal Deep Goel. Today we are going to discuss about the thyroid gland. This is the first lecture of our thyroid gland series. So the most important question that you guys have asking that what are the questions that are already asked from this very chapter. So these are the list of the questions that are already asked. Describe the synthesis and function of the thyroid hormone. Describe the synthesis function and the regulation of the thyroxine. Discuss the function and abnormalities of the thyroid hormones. Describe the effect of alteration in thyroid hormone in humans that are the applied aspect and the creatinism. Again, it is the applied aspect. It is a SQ short question. Now let's discuss about thyroid gland. So starting with the first the anatomy, the functional anatomy. As you guys already know that thyroid gland is the largest endocrine gland that we have and it has a two lobe that is located on the either side of the trachea and these two lobe are joined by isthmus. Now the weight of the thyroid gland is basically 25 gram more or less in adult and it is the highest amount of blood supply like 500 ml per 100 gram of the tissue per minute. Now this thyroid gland has a two hormone that is secreted by it. First is the thyroid hormone obviously and the second one is the calcitonin now as far as the thyroid hormone is concerned this thyroid hormone is basically regulate the metabolic metabolism of the tissue and the calcitonin as its name suggests is basically responsible for regulation of the calcium metabolism now if you make a cross section and take this and then make a slide and see under the microscope the histological aspect of the thyroid gland this thyroid gland grossly has a two lobe and inside this two lobe it is divided into various lobules you can see in this diagram it has two lobes and these two lobes have various lobule now if you enlarge this single lobule it's made up of follicle now what is follicle follicle is look like a spherical ball more or less a tennis ball Right? and this ten in normal tennis ball it is filled with air now in our case in this thyroid gland the follicle is filled with a fluid or let's say the same is a glue like fluid it is that fluid is known as colloid so basically folloid is a or this follicle is a ball like structure and it is filled with fluid that fluid is known as colloid and each follicle it is lined by a follicular cell and this follicular cell see this is a follicle this cross section of the follicle these are the cross section of this tennis ball the follicle entire and it's look like a circular shape but it is a cross section that's why it look like a circular basically it is spherical shape and it is lined by this epithelial cell these are the follicular cell and inside the follicle this is fluid that is filled with colloid it now this follicular lining it might be flat or it might be cuboidal in some case it is flat in some case it is cuboidal now when does it become flat and when does it become cuboidal or columnar that will be decided by the status of the gland whether the gland is active or whether the gland is inactive so what will be this uh, this thing in active and inactive gland let's discuss that thing when the gland is inactive the follicle will be look like this. this is a beautiful diagram i taken from the ganon this is the situation of the gland when it is inactive so basically it is filled with abundant amount of colloid follicle are very large and the cell lining that you guys see over here it is a flat when the gland is active it will be look like this follicle are very small cell become cuboidal you see this is the more or less larger as compared to this one it is cuboidal or the columnar and this white color spicules are the resorption lacunae it is responsible for endocytosis of the colloid that is situated inside this follicle that we discuss in detail in our subsequent slides now as far as this colloid is concerned this colloid is filled with a it's filled with large glycoprotein that glycoprotein the name of that large glycoprotein is the thyroglobulin and inside that thyroglobulin molecule 
the thyroid hormone this th is the thyroid hormone this thyroid globulin molecule contain thyroid hormone molecule inside it so basically this colloid is filled with glycoprotein and the name of the glycoprotein is thyroglobulin and thyroid gland also have uh, this para follicular c cell you can see over there there is a para follicular c cell that para follicular c cell also known as just c cell it secrete the calcitonin so you might be wondering that this is thyroid it has a thyroid hormone secreting cell it has a calcitonin secreting cell now what about the parathyroid gland where this parathyroid gland will be situated let's see where this parathyroid is situated if you see the thyroid gland from the behind from the posterior aspect there are four small swelling that is situated just behind the thyroid gland it is you guys seen in this diagram there are four yellow color swelling this swelling is a parathyroid gland so there are four parathyroid gland and one thyroid gland now what this parathyroid gland will do it will secrete the parathyroid hormone right and the function of the parathyroid hormone is increase serum calcium level now calcitonin is also regulate the calcium metabolism so what this calcitonin will do the other cell the para follicular cell or c cell it will secrete the calcitonin and that calcitonin will decrease the serum calcium level so you see parathyroid hormone is increase calcium and calcitonin decrease calcium so there might uh, the both hormone are responsible for balancing the normal calcium amount in our body now let's discuss in detail about the thyroid hormone first the introduction thyroid hormone basically there are two type of the thyroid hormone one is inactive another one is active now inactive is the thyroxine basically 93% of our circulating thyroid hormone are the thyroxine and the active one are t3 that is 7% of the uh, hormone that is situated inside our circulation now all the thyroxine is converted into t3 before its action why because t3 is more potent than the thyroxine is four times more potent than the thyroxine now what is the full form of t3 t3 stands for tri iodotyrosine what right? it so basically it has a three iodine molecule attached to it and t4 it has a four or thyroxine has a four iodine molecule attached to it let me give you the exact chemical structure of this t3 and t4 see in tri iodo tyrosine thyro uh, this uh, tyro tyronine basically there are three iodine molecule attached to it and in, in thyroxine there are four iodine molecule attached to it but attached to where it is basically attached to one amino acid this one it is tyrosine so what will actually happens in synthesis of thyroid hormone if the thyroid gland will take this one molecule of tyrosine and just make attachment of the iodine molecule now how thyroid hormone will be formed so to synthesize the thyroid hormone we need two things one is amino acid tyrosine this one and the another one is iodine we have to just add iodine inside this tyrosine molecule this is the how thyroid hormone gets synthesized now before we start the synthesizing process let's discuss a very few details of iodine and the entire iodine metabolism will will be taken in the biochemistry lecture now let's discuss a few thing of that iodine metabolism iodine is basically essential for the thyroid hormone and the requirement of iodine is very very small it is 50 mg per year and iodine is basically iodide form in our diet so it is absorbed from git as a iodide form and absorption will be take place same as chloride now most of the iodine will be excreted by the kidney but only one fifth will be removed by thyroid gland and uh, and remaining will be removed by the kidney and the source of the iodine will be the seafood milk and the vegetables so here comes the question what will happen in iodine deficiency now you see there are certain substances 
दैट आर इंटरफेयर विद द आयोडीन यूटिलाइजेशन बाय द थायरोइड ग्लैंड दैट सब्सटेंस दैट इंटरफेयर विद द आयोडीन यूटिलाइजेशन दे आर नोन एज गोइट्रोजन द टू वेल नोन गोइट्रोजन आर द कैबेज एंड कॉलीफ्लावर एज पत्ता गोभी एंड फूल गोभी गोभी एंड फ्लावर नाउ द स्टेप्स ऑफ द थायरोइड हॉर्मोन सिंथेसिस सो एज फार एज द बुक इज कंसर्न दे डिवाइड दैट द स्टेप्स ऑफ थायरोइड हॉर्मोन सिंथेसिस इंटू फाइव और सिक्स स्टेप्स बट द समरी रिमेन द सेम वी हैव टू जस्ट मेक श्योर दैट टायरोसिन मोलिक्यूल विल बिहेव आयोडीन अटैच टू इट राइट सो दीज आर द लिस्ट ऑफ द स्टेप्स बट डू नॉट गेट कन्फ्यूज विद दिस एंटायर सिक्वेंस ऑफ द स्टेप्स फर्स्ट स्टेप इज द आयोडीन ट्रेपिंग इन फोलिकुलर सेल सेकेंड वन इज फॉर्मेशन ऑफ थायरो ग्लोब्यूलिन थर्ड वन इज द ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ द आयोडीन फोर्थ वन इज द ऑर्गेनिफिकेशन ऑफ थायरो ग्लोबिन मोलिक्यूल एंड फाइनली द रिलीज ऑफ द थायरोइड हॉर्मोन सो आई मैंशन ओवर फाइव स्टेप्स ऑफ द थायरोइड हॉर्मोन सिंथेसिस बाय दिस फाइव स्टेप्स वी आर जस्ट गोइंग टू अटैच आयोडीन मोलिक्यूल टू द टायरोसिन मोलिक्यूल राइट सो द फर्स्ट we i i'm going to show you a figure there in which we are going to understand the entire sequence of events this is the figure see in this figure you can see that there is one thyroid follicle this red color this uh, pinkish color is the colloid material this one is the epithelial lining over here there is one slight showing there is a blood vessel over there so if you enlarge this figure like this it is this light pink color is the colloid this one is the entire follicle cell and over here it is the blood vessel and i told you in our earlier lecture that the membrane that is near to the blood vessel are the basolateral membrane and away from the blood vessel is the apical membrane you see so apical membrane will be faced towards colloid and basolateral membrane will face toward blood vessel we are going to use this two term basolateral membrane and apical membrane so make sure that you understand that apical membrane is face towards colloid basolateral membrane will be face towards blood what is let's start our first step is the iodine trapping now update of iodine sorry uptake of iodine by thyroid gland it is known as iodine trapping uh, iodine trapping so iodine will enter from blood into this thyroid follicle cell this process is known as iodine trapping that will be done by a symport that is situated over the basolateral membrane the name of that symport is nis basal membrane has a nis nis the full form of nis is sodium iodine symport Right. that sodium iodide symport will pump the iodine inside this thyroid cell via this symport iodine will be taken inside along with the sodium now the number of iodine will be taken inside is 1 along with 2 sodium so 1 iodide plus 2 sodium you see iodine will be trapped in the form of iodide remember that thing we are going to use that thing in our subsequent slide so this iodine this uh, iodine uh, transportation the nis molecule or nis pump will be present apart from thyroid gland inside salivary gland then the gastric mucosa then the placenta then the ciliary bodies of the eye choroid plexus and finally the mammary gland i show you the list of these uh, organ that is uh, in which this uh, iodine trapping will be take place because in recent mcq they show you this thing as a option and uh, and ask that in which of the following substance in which of the following organ this iodine transport will be taking place now why this nis the iodine concentration will be up to 30 times this increase iodine trapping via this nis up to 30 times and in according to the guidance that iodine trapping the concentration of the iodine sometimes is increase up to 250 times now here's the thing there are anions 
पर क्लोरेट एंड थायोसाइनेट बोथ दिस एन आई एन पर क्लोरेट एंड थायोसाइनेट विल ब्लॉक द एन आई एस बाई कॉम्पिटेटिव इनहिबिशन दे आर गोइंग टू कॉम्पीट विद दिस आयोडीन एंड मेक श्योर दैट आयोडीन कैन नॉट यूज दिस पम्प टू आयोडीन ट्रेपिंग राइट सो बेसिकली दे आर गोइंग टू इनहिबिट द आयोडीन ट्रांसपोर्ट इन साइड दिस सेल नाउ दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द आयोडीन ट्रांसपोर्ट फ्रॉम द बेजोलेट्रल मेम्रेन इन साइड दिस थायरॉइड फोलिकुलर सेल नाउ वी नीड दैट आयोडीन इन साइड दिस रीजन द कोलोइड रीजन दैट रीजन is close to this membrane that is apical membrane so iodine is supposed to get transported from apical side inside the colloid this colloid that transportation will be taking place by antiport chloride iodine antiport so the transportation of this level at the basolateral membrane is basically via symport and at the apical level it is by antiport this chloride iodine antiport that pump that ट्रांसपोर्ट प्रोटीन इज नोन एज ए पेंड्रीन रिमेंबर द टर्म पेंड्रीन नाउ वेर डज दिस पेंड्रीन वर्ड केम फ्रॉम दिस इज द प्रोटीन दैट इज फर्स्ट आइडेंटिफाई एज अ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ जीन दैट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर पेंडेड सिंड्रोम राइट वॉट इज पेंडेड सिंड्रोम लेट डिस्कस वॉट इज द पेंडेड सिंड्रोम नाउ दिस पेंड्रीन मोलिकुल इज प्रेजेंट इन two structure one is the follicular cell of the thyroid as we guys already know and the another structure that have a pendrin molecule is the inner ear so if there is a mutation in pendrin gene it leads to pendert syndrome now what happens what is the clinical picture of this pendert syndrome there is a problem in thyroid it will leads to goiter and again the problem with this inner ear it will leads to sensory neural deafness so it might be asked in any comments of what is the pendrin syndrome you have to write it down in this three or four sentence now there is one comment is actually asked in our previous exam is like that nin like perchlorate and thiocyanate are anti thyroid substances that why i incorporate these two name in our previous slide what you have to write it down same thing that we write it down in our previous slide that is uptake of iodine occur by iodine trapping basal membrane has a iodine pump known as nis both thiocyanate and perchlorate nin it competitively inhibit the iodine transport by competitive inhibition so they block the nis and ultimately they are anti thyroid substance now up to this we just transported the iodine inside the colloid now we need to transport tyrosine molecule inside the colloid so finally this iodine get attached to the tyrosine molecule for that we need to form thyroglobin now what is thyroglobin in simple term thyroglobin is a polypeptide that have a lots and lots of tyrosine molecule attached to it so basically polypeptide so it has to be synthesized in the same fashion as the protein synthesis will take place so the formation of thyroglobin endoplasmic retinoculum and golgi apparatus will synthesize the glycoprotein name as a thyroglobin now this thyroglobulin molecule has a tyrosine residue attached to it it is about 123 tyrosine residue this figure i will take from the guidance each thyroglobulin molecule has a 123 tyrosine residue attached to it of in this 123 tyrosine residue only 4 to 8 are normally form the thyroid hormone remaining are waste now see now we have two things iodine it is already present over this uh, colloid and we have thyroglobulin molecule again it will be um, this thyroglobulin molecule will enter inside the colloid now the only remaining thing that we have to make to make a thyroid hormone is just to uh, bind this iodine inside this thyroglobulin molecule right but to bind this iodine this iodide obviously oh, sorry the iodide we have to oxidize the iodide into iodine once this iodide is get oxidized then and then this iodine will be uh, bind with this tyrosine molecule so the third step is the oxidation of the iodine now this iodide will be oxidized into oxidized iodide by the protein the, sorry the enzyme known as peroxidase right this peroxidase is basically located at the apical membrane 
see this pentane molecule very near to the pentane molecule this peroxidase enzyme will attach to it and once this iodide will transported inside this colloid it is immediately oxidized into oxidized iodine right so this peroxidase is basically located in the apical membrane and it provide oxidized iodine at the same point where this thyroglobulin will be released got it so once this thyroglobulin will enter inside the colloid this oxidized iodine iodine is waiting for it to attach to the tyrosine residue so this peroxidase enzyme is responsible for iodide this oxidation of iodide it will be blocked by the cla this classes of the drug it is the the class is the thioamide let me give you the two drugs propyl thiouracil and the carbimazole both are going to inhibit the peroxidase and ultimately inhibiting the thyroid hormone synthesis now this peroxidase will be also inhibited by iodide itself so there are more amount of iodide it will be inhibit this peroxidase enzyme now this is about all about the oxidation of the iodine now what we have we have oxidized iodine over here where at the colloid level we have thyroglobulin molecule this one is the thyroglobulin molecule in which there is tyrosine molecule attached to it now only thing that is remain is we have to just attach this iodine to this thyroglobulin molecule that binding of oxidized iodine with the thyroglobulin molecule it is known as organification got it so what is the organification organification is nothing but attachment of oxidized iodine with the tyrosine molecule now i'm going to show you a figure that figure might be confusing so let me just make uh, just show you the figure then i will elaborate the entire figure see over one there is a follicular cell another this yellow portion is the colloid it is a reverse figure that we are already discussing so over here that is the tyrosine molecule that is just exocytose inside this thyroglobulin molecule this one is the follicular cell that follicular cell will make a thyroglobulin molecule and this thyroglobulin molecule via exocytosis entered inside the colloid right now this one is the iodine molecule this iodine molecule will be entered inside this colloid via pentrin and this iodine is ultimately going to attach with this tyrosine molecule and make this structure known as mit mit means mono iodo tyrosine single iodine is attached to the tyrosine molecule got it when the second iodine will attach to the tyrosine molecule it make a dit di iodo tyrosine so we get two structure one is mit mono iodo tyrosine dit di iodo tyrosine now this mono and di is basically the number of iodine molecule attached to the tyrosine molecule when this mit and dit will be combined they make t this t3 tri iodo tyrosine got it so to make a tri iodo tyrosine this mit has to be attached with this dit this thing is known as coupling and once two molecule of dit attached to each other they make a tetra tyrosine basically t4 so this attachment is known as coupling the mit attached to dit it make a t3 dit attached to other d uh, this dit molecule make a tyrosine so this is known as the organification now how will you write it down in exam the binding of oxidized iodine to to thyroglobin molecule it is called the organification now here's the thing to bind iod this oxidized iodine to the thyroglobin molecule also the peroxidase enzyme is required so oxidized iodine will bind with the tyrosine by same peroxidase that peroxidase will convert the iodide into oxidized iodine and this tyrosine is iodinated first at position number 3 and make mit then it iodide as a position number 5 to make dit and after that coupling of mit and dit will take place that coupling also required peroxidase enzyme the same enzyme that will required for organification and once the dit combined with the other molecule of dit it will make t4 
once the MIT combined with the DIT it make T3 and here's the interesting fact once the DIT combined with the MIT it will make RT3 now this RT3 is nothing but a reverse T3 now what is the significance of reverse T3 see thyroid hormone is basically designed to increase metabolism of our tissue right so basically it is a, uh, increasing the metabolic activity of all the cell now this RT3 reverse T3 is an inert substance it does not have an action like T3 so once we do not want to increase our calorie consumption let's see we have to conserve our calorie we need to decrease the synthesis of T3 and to decrease the synthesis of T3 we have to make more amount of reverse T3 in um, instead of T3 right so that condition is known as a euthyroid sick syndrome in euthyroid sick syndrome we have to conserve the calorie so we decrease the T3 and T4 synthesis and increase reverse transcription synthesis by the enzyme known as D3 what is D3 we are discussing in our subsequent slide now here's the thing what happens once there is a more amount of iodine is present see large amount of iodide that will inhibit the organification a large amount of iodide that is present inside the follicular cell it will be inhibit the iodide organification and that causes hypothyroidism and ultimately that condition is known as wolf chekhov effect remember the term wolf chekhov effect so iodide we need iodide to make a thyroid hormone but if the concentration of this iodide is more that large amount of iodide will inhibit this attachment of oxidized iodine to the thyro thyroxine molecule and it will lead to decrease the synthesis of thyroid hormone and ultimately it causes hypothyroidism and that condition of large iodide and leads to hypothyroidism it condition is known as wolf chekhov effect that's explain why there are some drugs that contain iodine molecule iodide molecule attached to it it will causes hypothyroidism the example is amiodarone amiodarone is a drug that have iodine containing iodine molecule attached to it now opposite to this wolf chekhov effect you need to remember one more effect that excess amount of iodine see in this there is iodine excess amount of iodine it will leads to hyperthyroidism over here there are iodide there are two there is this is the difference this is iodide the large amount of iodide it will leads to hypothyroidism and excess amount of iodine it will leads to hyperthyroidism that condition is known as jod bes do effect and ultimately it will be seen in graves disease now what is graves disease we discuss in our subsequent lecture but right now in this slide the most important thing is that large amount of iodide it will leads to hypothyroidism and the name of the effect is the wolf chekhov effect and the excess amount of iodide the large amount of iodine it will leads to hyperthyroidism and the condition is known as jod bes do effect right now up to that we make a thyroid hormone inside the thyroglobulin now let's discuss about the storage of the thyroid hormone see thyroid gland is a unusual type of endocrine gland its ability to store hormone so after the thyroid hormone synthesis each thyroid globulin molecule has about 30 molecule of t4 and few molecule of t3 attached to it and in this form this thyroid hormone is going to store in the colloid for about 2 to 3 months so when the synthesis of thyroid hormone ceases the physiological effect of the deficiency are not actually observed for the several months the another beautiful thing in the thyroid gland is that the storage of the thyroid hormone will not take place inside the cell instead they synth synthesize the hormone and stored inside the outside the cell inside this colloid fluid got it so thyroid gland is basically unusual gland for two things one is that they store a hormone for a large amount of time or uh, quite su uh, sufficient amount of time and also the storage will be take place outside the actual cell 
what it this is about about the storage of the thyroid hormone now how this thyroid hormone will be released again let me show you the diagram of the thyroid hormone releasing uh, the entire sequence this yellow color portion is the colloid this red color portion is the blood vessel so this is supposed to be the basolateral membrane this one is the apical membrane this is the follicular cell got it now what will happen to release the thyroid hormone this is the colloid this colloid has a two thing one is the this thyroglobulin molecule inside this thyroglobulin molecule there are t3 t4 mit and dit all these thing are inside this thyroglobulin molecule so what we have to do we have to take the thyroglobulin molecule inside the follicular cell cut the t3 and t4 and release inside the blood circulation this is the actual sequence now to make this sequence this apical membrane will extend a pseudo pod and take some portion of this colloid inside this and make a vesicle like this so first there is a pseudo pod extension then making a endocytosis and this follicle this vesicle contains thyroglobulin tg means thyroglobulin and t3 and t4 attached to it once this vesicle will be formed this vesicle is going to fuse with the lysosome that contain the digestive juice and this digestive enzyme once this endocyte vesicle fused with the lysosome this t3 and t4 will be detached from the thyroglobulin molecule and it will release inside t3 and t4 now here's the thing that i would like to highlight is that some of this mit and dit are not able to form t3 and t4 they just remain as dit and mit so again once this lysosome will be uh, destroy this uh, sorry the release uh, it release the t3 and t4 it also release mit and dit inside this follicle cell now this mit and dit will not be released inside the blood instead they will be used again for thyroid hormone synthesis how that we discuss in our subsequent slide so the most important thing is that we require some protein that is attached over here see over here this is the protein written over here this phosphorylated protein this phosphorylated protein the name of that protein is the megalin so remember the term megalin is responsible for endocytosis for release of the thyroid hormone and pendrin this is located at the same apical membrane that is responsible for the transportation of iodine iodine inside this colloid fluid now how to write it down let's see how to write it down in exam you have to first write it down like this endocytosis of the colloid require a protein known as megalin first the apical surface of the thyroid cell send a pseudopod and pseudopod extension fuse and form a vesicle and contain a small part of colloid fluid containing thyroglobulin this vesicle will entered inside the follicular cell by endocytosis and lysosome will fuse with the colloid containing vesicle that contains the digestive enzyme now this enzyme will digest the thyroglobulin molecule and release t3 t4 mit and dit and in this four t3 and t4 will be diffused into surrounding capillaries now what will happens to the mit and dit that's the question what will happen to the mit and dit now one third portion of the iodinated tyrosine in the thyroglobulin molecule they never become thyroid hormone but they remain mit and dit now let's see the during the digestion of the thyroglobulin molecule this mit and dit will also get freed but they are not secreted inside the blood instead the iodine molecule that is attached to this mit and dit will be cleaved by the enzyme known as d iodinase this is the d this d iodinase enzyme has a three subtype d1 d2 and d3 and this d iodinase enzyme has a very special a very rare amino acid required for their activity the name of the amino acid write it down somewhere it is seleno cysteine it is the 21st amino acid in gaitan the enzyme responsible for this cleavage it is written like this microsomal iodotyrosine d iodinase i repeat myself one more time mit and dit are d iodinated by microsomal iodo 
tyrosine diiodinase this, this is the name that is written in ganon now this d3 this d3 is responsible for formation of the reverse t3 from the t4 molecule that we discuss in our subsequent slide now let's talk about the normal values thyroid gland secret t4 about 80 microgram per day it secret t3 uh, sorry uh, it secret t3 into 4 microgram per day and finally reverse t3 into microgram per day so t4 80 microgram per day t3 4 microgram per day and reverse t3 2 microgram per day in the normal value that is present inside the circulation this t4 is basically 8 microgram per deciliter and t3 is 0 0.15 microgram per deciliter remember the normal value of the secretion that might be asked in exam the normal value that is present inside the blood it is not frequently asked but the how much amount of t3 t4 will be secreted via thyroid gland that, that is asked in mcq now here might be the question what is the actual amount of tsh how the actual tsh will be secreted the amount of tsh that will be secreted is 110 microgram per day 110 microgram per day now let's talk about the transport of the thyroxine and t3 molecule now on entering to the blood 99 percent of this thyroid hormone will be in bound form the one percent is in the free form both will be bind with thyroid binding proteins tbp now this thyroid binding protein is three type one is albumin another one is trans thyretin and last one is thyroxine binding globulin now this thy trans thyretin molecule is nothing but pre albumin it is formally known as thyroxine binding pre albumin but the nowadays the term will be changed into trans thyretin now here is the thing I will give you the half life of this three binding globulin that is asked in MCQ. Albumin has a 13 days of the half life, trans thyretin has a 2 days and the thyroid binding globulin has a 5 days. Now see thyroid binding globulin this TBG has the highest affinity to bind the thyroid hormone, highest affinity, highest affinity right and this albumin has the highest capacity to bind the thyroid hormone these two are the two different things highest affinity is tbg this thyroid binding globulin but because of the large amount and more half-life the albumin has the largest capacity so there are two different type of mcq might be asked one is about the affinity the largest affinity the highest affinity is for tbg and the largest capacity to bind the thyroid hormone is albumin right now apart uh, the, apart from this this thyroxine and t3 the t4 and t3 t4 has a strong affinity to bind this binding protein and the half life is seven days on the other hand t3 has a less affinity to affinity to bind the thyroid binding protein and half life is one day so basically T3 has a half life of one day and T4 has a half life of one week. This is easy to remember. This is all about our today's lecture. Next time when we meet, we are going to discuss about the action of the thyroid 